You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of sound. A dimension of sight. A dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Saber Zone. Hi, good evening folks. Welcome to the Saber Zone, the video on the channel, if you're new, that discusses what he had to say. I wanted to do a quick Saber Zone video, guys, before we jump on the, um, the pregame. Since I got the time, since the game's at 10 o'clock, I can squeeze out another video. There's no reason I can't. And uh, maybe a video or two, even before the pregame. We'll see. We'll see what I can do. Okay. This comment caught my eye. It just was uh, posted in the last hour. Here we go. And shout out goes to DAV, I'm guessing it's Dave, 1968. He goes, I will be at the game in Seattle, donning my Darlene number 26 jersey, chanting, let's go Buffalo. <laughs> and that I wanted to send out some good vibes from uh, Dave's comment, guys, because we have to root the boys on tonight. We have to root them on. We have to forgive them for their crap effort last game. We just have to. It's in the past. And I was looking at um, the schedule, you know, beyond the four games. In case we come out looking good. If we win three out of four, I know we'll be able to live with it and come out of it still alive. I do know that. But I'm thinking if we're going to make a serious push to the playoffs, wouldn't it be something if we just swept all these games? It's going to be a daunting task in Vancouver, too. We know this. You know, this Canucks team is for real. They're a good-looking bunch over there this year. And I'll tell you what, guys, if, 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 um, if, if Vancouver go into the playoffs and they fizzle out early, their fans really should forgive them because that team now, with talk, it is on the right track. That, that's a franchise on the right track right now. And that team, that coach should be coach of the year this year. I, don't, I think it's a one-way ticket to coach of the year. The, whether Rick Tockett should be coach of the year. Bar none. I, I, I don't see how anybody else can even be mentioned, really, guys. I mean, all the other teams, they're, they're supposed to be where they are, kind of. So I, I, I think without a doubt, like, that's a runaway over there. Although we could make, we could make an argument for Knobloch over in Edmonton because of how that team turned around under him. But I think it's the Vancouver Canucks. We knew before the year started the Edmonton Oilers were going to be... Uh, a powerhouse. We knew this. So, you know, we didn't think Vancouver was, did we? None of us. And they're like a pleasant surprise this year. They're still our cousins. I get that. It's just, I have a hard time with fans from Canada, <laughs> even though I'm Canadian. My God, the arrogance that comes out of some of them. But actually, Vancouver's not as bad as some other fan bases. So overall, I think without a doubt, we'd all agree Toronto's the most difficult to deal with and right up there for me would be Detroit's fan base really you know how they just are so arrogant about Steve Eisenman it just I, I can't even get it out of my head day to day sometimes look um, as we go into this game tonight Dave I mean yeah we need you get out there cheer man cheer make your presence felt you know it's a comfortable from what I've seen, the, the chairs are nice and comfortable in Seattle, right? So not only will you be comfortable, you might be comfortable in a game where we're winning 3 4 nothing. I hope. Come here. Come here. Guys, I've never introduced you to one of my kitties. And one of my kitties is in the room with me. There's Angel. That's Angel. And she's my only cat now. I lost my other cat this year. And uh, Angel we found from the streets years ago. And my daughter managed to uh, rescue her. Had to trap her, and uh, once she came in the house, this cat never wanted to go back out again. <laughs> she was, okay, are you going to feed me and love me and take care of me? Okay, I'm staying. I swear it was that kind of relationship. So, yeah, I know. I kept the name Angel. My ex's kids named her, and I kept the name. So, Angel's about 12, I'm guessing, right about there. We've had her about 10 years now, so. Um, tonight, guys, uh, let's get it. Let's get it done and let's make tomorrow a real showdown. You know, I don't want to go in a desperate tomorrow. And, I, you know, to start UPL in this game, I think is the right move, guys, because you've got to focus on the, 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 the hurdle in front of you. 
we can't worry about tomorrow. I agree that uh, UPL should be nuts tonight because uh, you, you worry about the hurdle in front of you because if you worry about the hurdle tomorrow, we might not even get to that hurdle if we think we've already jumped over this one today. So let's concentrate on the one we're in today. Let's get this game. And I'll tell you what, I'll feel, I will, as a fan, feel really good about Devin Levi and Nets tomorrow. I'm fine with it. I know some of you are scared, not me, not at all, zero. Zero fear with Devin Levi with this guy. No, no, no. Give that guy a chance to thrive and he does it. So m more than he doesn't. If you look at his NHL career, he has been, he's had more really good starts than bad ones. But I get why they wanted to use him down there. It wasn't because he wasn't ready to be the backup here, guys. It's he's not ready to ride the bench. So you want to get him playing. You want, you want to maximize what you can with him while we're running UPL through this run that he's on this year. So start UPL, put in Levi tomorrow, and uh, if we win both games, we're going to feel pretty damn good about our goaltending situation all of a sudden. That's a big if. Two hard games, guys. Not going to be easy. Seattle's uh, in, they're in desperation mode right now. It's a desperate team over there. I mean, they're 11 points, 10, 10, 11 points out or something like that last I checked. They're kind of out of it. But mathematically, if they could win seven in a row, then they win seven in a row earlier this year. If they get on a big, long winning streak, they could at least have a shot, they're thinking. But I don't think they're going to catch. Uh, uh, I, I think they're done. I think they're done over there. Maybe not mathematically yet, but if we beat them, they're pretty much mathematically done at that point. If we beat them in regulation, we're lucky that our conference, our weaker teams we're trying to catch. We're lucky. And guys, uh, maybe I'll save it for another video. Uh, there's other things I want to go over. I want to talk about this comment because this is where we should all be tonight, guys. Rooting on the boys. Just root them on as fans. Don't even get carried away with playoffs today if, if, if you want to have a reason not to frustrate yourself. Don't think about playoffs. Just, you know, even though we're close, five points, we're not out. It's a winning streak, a three-game winning streak, and we're right there. These are going to be hard games. They're going to be hard games. You know, guys, I keep getting, I want to, on another note, I want to remember to talk about this. Actually, uh, I, I, when it comes to the channel, I keep getting these messages from these gambling sites. I keep wanting, they keep wanting me. And if any of those gambling sites are watching my channel, please stop. I'm, I have no interest in expose, in promoting gambling on my channel. I'm not into it. Okay. I'm stupid enough with gambling in real life. I'm not going to promote it to people out there that might have children so they can lose what little money they have. No. So I want to put that out there because it, it, you know, I always check in my, my emails and there are always these gambling sites that are basically asking me saying they think I'm a good fit for their product and their, and I just ignore them. I don't even reply to them anymore. I get these messages all the time. And for a hundred or 200 bucks a month, I'm not going to promote gambling on my channel. So stop. Please, if you're watching it, you're one of those gambling sites, please stop sending me these emails because I'm not going to do it for a gambling site. And I'm not going to do it for like something stupid like, uh, you know, Manscaped and all that. I'm not doing these things. It has to be something that's near and dear to my heart. If you're some SPA, SPCA shelter or something, I'm open ears. I would do that for free. I would, I would do that for free. I wouldn't charge. So it depends on the thing. Guys, we're going to see tonight. Let's get this one. We got to get this game or else it's not going to be a fun post game. And uh, I don't know if I'll do the post game today, guys, because the game's going to finish about 1 a.m. Eastern time. Give take. You know what I mean? 1245 or something. So I don't know. I don't know where we stand. Maybe 1230 realistically, but let's say 1240. You know, what if it goes into a shootout? So th this is a type of game that uh, the Sabres not only have to win, they have to rock the boat on the league again. We can't just come in here and la-di-da and kind of hope that we, you know, show up. No, let make it happen tonight, guys. Come on, man. We've seen you guys do it. We've seen you do it when you put your minds to it. You guys weren't there in Detroit. Don't bring that team on the ice. Don't. <laughs> Please. I don't want to see that team the rest of the year ever again. That was... Brutal what we what, what we lived through that that day. I mean that was 
I don't want to see that team the rest of the season. That was one of our worst performances of the entire season in Detroit. That was awful. Awful. I would say it's one of the worst five performances of the entire season, in my opinion. That's how bad it was. The second period was probably the worst second period we played the entire season. Standing around watching these guys. It's not like it's a fast team over there. It's not. It's not like it's a hard-hitting team over there. It's not. And they were doing both those things to us. Speed and hard-hitting. So we have ourselves to blame in that situation. Guys, we're younger, we're bigger, we're stronger. Truth is, we're more talented. And to let that just happen, you know, it's not like they have that world-class coach over there either. So it doesn't make any sense what happened last game. Let's hope we get this today. See you guys in the post-game. Uh, no, I'm sorry, in the pre-game. In a few minutes or another video. See that. Have a good one. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to ensure dimension access.